Welcome back to the Graham Stephan Show. So today we're gonna to be talking about how Mr. Beast is able to spend $4 million every single month. For those who wanna do the math on this, it's $48 million a year. All thanks to this YouTube channel, Colin and Samir, for bringing this to my attention. They did an interview with Mr. Beast, and I have to say, it's mind blowing. So if you wanna see it, all you gotta do is subscribe, hit the like button, and with that said, Let's begin here. Mr. Beast spends $4 million a month making YouTube videos across all of his channels. And how do we know that? I showed them my finances. <laughs> ah, man. So Mr. Beast makes a channel like every week and, and within seconds, it's like the things that a million subscribers. Mr. Beast now has channels in different languages that I, I probably didn't even know exist. But meanwhile, he's, he's finding a way to monetize it. His content, truly, I have to say, is content for around the world. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you're from, what language you speak, what you believe in. Everyone just likes getting free money. And Mr. Beast has absolutely perfected everything about that in a way that the YouTube algorithm loves. In fact, it's, it's every algorithm. He's basically just a uh, walking algorithm that just... He could point at anything and he's like, yeah, I, I'll beat that, I'll beat that, I'll beat that, yeah, I'll, I'll dominate that platform, it's incredible. We saw line by line what he spends on and how much he spends. And he just made his biggest single purchase ever. I just bought this brand new studio and 100 acres of land around it. Wow, that's, isn't that where they film Squid Games? Is it? I feel like they use that studio that they're filming in right now. Gosh. Imagine doing that. He may, he can make the money back in one video. I made money, I spend money. On this episode of The Breakdown, we're gonna take you through our experience with Mr. Beast and answer the question of why he spends $4 million a month to make his YouTube videos. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and let's break it down. Yeah, guys, go and subscribe to Colin and Samir. Right now, they're at 590,000 subscribers, and they deserve at least a million subscribers. They have to. They make such good videos, I don't get how they don't have a million subscribers. We need to help them. I'll link to their channel down below in the description. And they're such nice people. We've done a podcast with them before in the past. I've been a huge fan of their videos and uh, just go and do it. It's worth it. Very few people know what his operation looks like behind the scenes, what he spends all of this money on and who he works with to pull it all off. I filmed a few videos with him and I was like, yo, you're funny, you want a job? We've known him for almost two years and we didn't know any of it. So when he invited us to come visit, we did not hesitate to book our flights. After we spent about 48 hours with him, we sat down before we left to talk about everything we'd seen. Look at their setup. Wow, just for this interview, they got great lighting here. See, we, I was, I was about to say, well, we need lighting like that, but I realized that I used towels on my lights and that works just as well. So I'm gonna keep doing that. The first thing we had to ask him was about this massive warehouse we were sitting in. How much did this cost and how long in the making has this been? It's probably not a good way to start it because like there's so much explanation. It seems excessive. Why would you just buy this? Now I just seem like some dumb rich YouTuber. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Okay, Jimmy didn't want to start there. Oh man, I would just be like, yeah, I just think $15 million, the payment's this, I got this interest rate fixed for 20 years. That's how I would answer it. For the first five years of making YouTube videos, although Jimmy loved it, he struggled to make it a career. After like year after year after year, like literally it just like, this is never gonna happen. That's all I ever talked about in school. That's all I ever did. I thought it was a freak of nature. Cause like people would tell me, all you do is talk about YouTube. You're too obsessed with YouTube, like get a life. And so- You have to be that obsessed though. If you wanna be the best, like uh, Mr. Beast, you, you have to have that sort of obsession that dominates everything else because that's the only way you're ever gonna get that good at something to be able to spend $4 million a month on videos. In the high school yearbook, there was this section that says, what are things that people don't know about you? Jimmy Donaldson, things people don't know about me is I have a YouTube channel. I read it in the yearbook and I'm like, what? Jimmy has a YouTube channel? What is a YouTube channel? What are we talking about? Oh yeah, moms would always be so upset over stuff like that. Be like, oh, who are you talking to? The strangers. I remember my parents. Uh, now this is like, I don't wanna say the beginning of the internet, but like 2000, right? And I was talking to uh, all these people on message boards about reef aquariums. My parents are always like, who are you talking to? Why, why would a full grown adult wanna have a conversation with you about aquariums? But guess what? Like everyone is really nice and we we're able to talk about reef aquariums. So I'm sure any parent would look at this and be like, oh, you're on YouTube. Uh, who are you talking to on YouTube? And uh, get kind of worried. For me, I, I hate, I hate school. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I just wanna make YouTube videos. But it was pretty simple. You know, Jimmy, you go to college, you can you can stay in the, in the bonus room upstairs. You drop out, you're out of the house. <laughs>
I like his laser focus, though. I was the same way. I'm like, I'm not going to go to college. I think, I think it's silly. Why waste the money? I don't want to do that. I want to do this instead. Just go and do it. I really like that sort of, uh, that attention that he has on this. I would <laughs> act like I was going to college, and then I would, like, just sit in my car in the college campus and just work on videos or edit. But I didn't have enough money to move out. I wasn't making anything. Yeah. So I just didn't tell my mom. That can't last for that long. Yeah. yeah. No, and <laughs> thankfully, I remember sitting in, like, on the stairs in front of one of the college classrooms, and I was like, yo, I don't know what the f is going on, but like I've just been grinding, grinding every hour of the day and I just pay like 20 grand a month. I'm ready to like tell mom that I'm failing every class. Yeah, mom, I, I have zeros and everything. I haven't been going. And I was like, I'll move out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Imagine if he vlogged that call. Imagine if he just filmed that interaction between him and his mom dropping out of college. Someone could turn that into an NFT. <laughs> I, I guarantee someone will. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, that's my annual salary right there that you just made in a month. The first thing I did was retired my mom. Factually, the best mom on the planet. Like, your mom's <laughs> second, whoever's watching this. I wanted to give you money to put towards your house or something. Don't you owe a lot of money in your house? See, mom, I told you dropping out of college was a good idea. <laughs> I like it. It's funny. It's funny. It's lighthearted when it works, though. I'm curious, though, how many people have dropped out of college and just failed. They do YouTube videos, and they're like, ah, oh, crap. Uh, yeah, I know, I should've... Hey mom, uh, actually, can I move back in? Can I go back to college, please? I'm, I'm curious how many of the other scenarios we're just not hearing about. So like you saw in the beginning, Jimmy showed us his finances. <laughs> so you go from making money, spending money, to making money, losing money. Yeah. <laughs> on, on some videos. On some and then other videos right? have to make money to make up for it, yeah. I'd make 50 grand a month, and then I'd film a $50,000 video that would end up costing $60,000. I'm looking at these. World's hottest substance versus coldest substance. 75 million views. How is this so simple yet it's like so effective? It's true though, like that's just, they're in just interesting videos. I think every video like at, at this level from him was so calculated and so planned just to do well. And he had the mindset that he, he knew what people would wanna watch. Trying to fly using only leaf blowers. I wonder if this would work today. I don't think this, style, this this is four years ago, would, would work today. I feel like every year, multiple times a year actually, there's different styles and formats that come in and out. And uh, this worked back then. I, I'd be curious if someone tries this again today, if they could do it. One of the videos was where you were giving away houses and that yeah. obviously cost, you know. Yeah, we spent just shy of a million dollars. Just shy yeah. of a million dollars. And you told us how much you, that video made in on AdSense. <laughs> yeah. How much did that video make on Not AdSense? Not a million dollars. Uh, way less than half a million dollars, I'll tell you that. And then there was a brand deal on it, but even then, because that's not including the cost of the people to produce it and stuff like that. So it was closer to like 1.3 million to do the video. We're definitely not gonna make over a million dollars <laughs> on that video, so. Wow, so, okay, so 1.3 million dollars to, to do that video, and he probably made $700,000 back. It's a risky strategy, but you got to admit, in his case, it worked well. I couldn't justify losing money on videos, and I've lost money on videos, and I have to say, I, it's, I don't like it. I don't like doing that. And I'll tell you, the two videos I lost money on, one where I bought Tesla full self-driving for $8,000 to try it out for a video, uh, and the video made $3,000. So right there, I'm down four. Now, full self-driving on Tesla is worth more now, so, you know, my value is kind of there. But uh, the second video was the Logan Paul Pokemon pack. I spent $11,000 on one pack of Pokemon cards and the video I think made $7,500 in ad revenue. Now I did pull a, a hollow Gyarados, so it worked out. But like on the surface, I'm still, you know, I like to be able to just make a video and make money. And, that, and that's it, that, that's my thing. So I like that. The type of stuff I do now is would have been unfathomable to yeah. anyone back when I was younger. This is $100,000, half a million dollars, $1 million. What was your relationship to money when you were growing up? It's not like I was like worrying where my next meal would come from, but. Look at the unbranded Gatorade. Like, you know what it is. They're smart with the orange cap. You could take the label off and you know that's Gatorade. And uh, that water. Oh, they all look like that. To make the best videos possible, he needed more space. And that's because his videos have different sets. I started off in my bedroom, and then I got a little office building. And then we outgrew that in like three months. And then I got like a little warehouse. Then I got a bigger warehouse. And then I got two warehouses because like the videos were getting so big. I didn't realize that every set is like custom built. Yeah, a lot of people don't think about that. And that's what makes a good video is when you don't even think about all the work that goes in behind the scenes because it seems so flawless and Mr. Beast does that. And he makes it seem it's just like it's him and a camera. 
Meanwhile, there's like 50 people working behind the scenes to make it a reality. So the reason that Mr. Beast spends all of this money on all of these buildings to build all of these sets comes down to this one graph. This is called a retention graph. The whole time while we were there, Jimmy was giving us advice on how to get our videos to 70% retention. 70%, that's what you need. If it's below that, figure out how to get higher. So that means- Wow, 70%, that, that's pretty impressive. I have to say most of my videos here on this channel, uh, the peak is 65. And that's like a really, really, really good retention rate. I would say the average here is about 55 to 62, give or take. Main channel's about 55% as well. Any higher than that is rare. So that means 70% of the people who clicked on the video are still watching at the end of the video. I went back and watched the FBI video again. Those first 40 seconds were so jam packed. The thing people undervalue the most is literally the first 10 seconds of the video. Yeah, I, uh, I met Mr. Beast once before and I, I'm just gonna say this because it's so incredible, but uh, you know, it was, it was an event in Las Vegas. A lot of people were going out and, uh, and not like you know, clubs or anything like that. They were going out to dinner and this and that and like, you know, different like Top Golf and stuff. Uh, Jimmy wanted to do a uh, YouTube mastermind where we would stay in a hotel room and we would go through each other's analytics and analyze the first 30 seconds of our videos to understand why it did or did not do well. And that's what he wanted to do. And I, of course, was like, oh my God, that sounds amazing. So we did that. And uh, watching him, like watching his mind work for this first like 10 to 30 seconds was insane. I mean, every little, like every little thing that you wouldn't even think about, he's like, no, you gotta do this. You gotta, you gotta put this flash on screen. You gotta cut over here, uh, come back over there. You, know, you want this point right here. Like every little thing was so calculated. And I, w I wouldn't be surprised if he spends half of his time on that first minute. If the first minute isn't perfect, his whole video is a waste. So it's incredible to see him work. It's very hard with a single storyline, if you're doing like a double digit minute video to just have that one thing drip their entire attention throughout the whole video and pay off at the end. So typically if you're doing a longer video, you should introduce like a side story and like you should have some plan halfway through like to re-engage them so they don't just get bored. Okay, now what we didn't tell you is that by the end of this video, one of you watching is gonna win some cash. For the remainder of the video, anytime someone says the word beast, we're gonna tack on $100 to the final amount. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is comment something below. Ooh, maybe I should start doing that. We'll see. Let's see. <laughs> Upstairs, there's multiple rooms for the creative teams. Now in that same area is a huge warehouse for props. All of the things that he's used in past videos and wants to keep around. Next to that was a trailer with sets for Beast Gaming. This is my setup. And Beast Reacts. These videos have insane retention and like, they just do well every single time. Wow, yeah, the, I like the Mr. Beast Reacts because yeah, I would agree with him, the retention on those. Like I, when I click on one of those videos, I tend to watch it all the way through. It's just so simple. And whoever he has picking the videos to react to, in my opinion, they, they deserve a raise because to, to scour the internet and know exactly which videos to look for, Man, it's tough. This is now the official, like, biggest single investment you've made. Oh, of course, what? by uh, 20 billion folds. You and know what I mean? as we, like, you guys are only seeing the inside of this space, but there's also a lot of space around yeah, I, it. Yeah, I like, don't know if I want to go too yeah, in-depth, but sure. more acres than you could ever need. We're gonna build 20,000 square feet of office. You know, we have multiple warehouses, but videos take 90 days to do. I'm curious, just, how is this sustainable? Because right now, for Mr. Beast to keep going at this, he's got to keep going on the videos. I don't think he's ever going to stop. But I wonder if there's ever a point where he worries about stepping back. And if he's not the one doing this, how is, how is everyone able to get paid uh, for the next like 10 to 20 years? But you know what? Then again, if Mr. Beast says he's going to make videos for another 20 years, I'll take him face value it at, at his word on that and know that he's going to do a good job. Why do you want to be the best YouTuber? I don't fucking know. You don't know. I just, ever since I was 13, I feel like it was programmed in me. That sounds weird. People thought it was crazy. It, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to me either. I was just like, I'm going to be a YouTuber. So uh, they're talking about retention. We're 10 minutes and 44 seconds into an 11 minute video and they haven't even wrapped up yet. So this is telling you something that they want to end it abruptly and that's gonna get them to that retention rate. Do you ever entertain the possibility that one day you won't care about being the biggest YouTuber? I mean, I'm going on 10 years and <laughs> I love it more than anything. You took my channel away from me, I like, I, I don't know what I would do. Let's test this out. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and until next time.